Hello, and welcome to AHAVTS.com Clipcast on EIGRP Feasible and Advertised Distance. My name is Aleem HLE. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm this handsome gentleman to the right. And a few days prior to this Clipcast, I've been asked by a few colleagues a common question. What is EIGRP's feasible distance and advertised distance? Because these two terms are quite confusing, even for the seasoned IT professional. And it got me thinking, maybe I should do a clipcast on it. So, here we are. Well, in this clipcast, we're going to talk about EIGRP's feasible distance, the advertised distance, and the feasibility condition that exists within an EIGRP domain. So, let's get started. Well, as we all know, EIGRP is Cisco's proprietary routing protocol with many complexities, two of which are the feasible distance and the advertised distance. Now, the feasible distance is the lowest known distance or best metric with respect to a router along a path to a particular destination. The feasible distance also includes the metric to the router's neighbor who is advertising the path to the destination. On the screen, I have a sample network. Router A has one of several paths to choose from in order to reach the network 129.186.0.0. For simplicity, the cost to reach each router is also shown. From Router's A perspective, the routers who are advertising the path to 129.186.0.0 are Routers C and B. Given the information we know, Router A will choose the path a, C, E, since this one represents the lowest known distance or best metric to reach the network 129.186.0.0. By knowing the feasible distance, EIGRP can determine which route is the successor and with additional computation determine the feasible successor. Now the advertised distance or reported distance is the total metric along a path to a particular destination as advertised by an upstream neighbor, in this case router B and C for router's A perspective. So in our example, the advertised distance from router B is 19 and the advertised distance from router C is 16. So let's go to a live network and take a look at the feasible distance and advertised distance. I will issue the show IP route command and we'll find our network uh, 129.186.0.0. Here we can see that the administrative distance is 90 and this huge number of 2,349,056. Well, this number represents the best metric, hence the feasible distance to the network 129.186.0.0 that is installed in Routers A routing table. And the IP address of 12.12.12.2 is that of router C. Now, to find the advertised distance, I will issue the show IP EIGRP topology command. And uh, let's find our network here. Oh, okay, here we are. For the network 129.186.0.0, we have one successor with a feasible distance of 2,349,056 that we've seen in the routing table already. Now, underneath, we have some device IPs as well. Well, the successor is the one with the lowest feasible distance, and this so happens to be router C. And in parentheses, we see both the feasible distance and the advertised distance of 2,323,456. Okay, so we've gotten through the feasible distance and advertised distance. Now let's lastly talk about EIGRP's feasibility condition. Now I've been asked this question on numerous interviews and I also asked this question myself when interviewing others. What is the feasibility condition or feasibility factor? Well to start, let me quote some verbatim that I found on Wikipedia. If for a destination, a neighbor router advertises a distance that is strictly lower than a feasible distance, then this neighbor lies on the loop-free route to this destination. So what does that mean? It basically breaks down to this equation. The advertised distance must be less than the feasible distance of a neighbor router to be considered a feasible successor to the successor router for a given destination. 
The feasibility condition helps us determine if in fact a backup route exists if our primary route or successor fails. So, getting back to our diagram, since we found that the route to 129.186.0.0 goes through router C with the metric or feasible distance of 23, this is our successor. But we also have a route through router B. So let's determine if the advertised distance of router B is less than the installed feasible distance on router A. So router B has an advertised distance of 19 which is less than the feasible distance of 23 installed on router A. Therefore, router B is the feasible successor of router A. Now getting back to my live network, we can see this on my EIGRP's topology table on router A. Although the distance through router B is greater than that of router C, the advertised distance on router B is less than the feasible distance installed on router A. Therefore, router B has a loop-free route to network 129.186.0.0 and is also a feasible successor of router A. Wow, what a clipcast, huh? Well, in this clipcast, we talked about EIGRP's feasible distance, the advertised distance, and the feasibility condition. I hope this clip cast on EIGRP's feasible and advertised distance was informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.